Many thanks, Louise. Uh, front pages today. Really, it's all one story uh, among the serious papers. Isn't it? Angry Clegg turns fire on Cameron over Europe. Veto, uh, Sunday Times. Cabinet rifts open up over uh, cabinet, uh, Cameron's veto. That's him at Chequers, where he was warmly applauded by Conservative MPs. Uh, Sunday Telegraph, Europe veto, tensions rise in Cabinet, quoting not only Vince Cable of the Liberal Democrats, but Ken Clark in their concerns over what happened, and then, well, the other papers are all different stories. It's all Kelly's fault, says the Sunday Mirror, but exactly who Kelly is and why it's all her fault, you'll have to buy the Sunday Mirror, I'm afraid, to find out. I would, I would have shown you the uh, Independent on Sunday, but it's just been stolen by Nigel Farage of UKIP, <laughs> um, who's among my guests, as is Jenny Agata and Simon Jenkins. Thank you all very much indeed for joining us. Where We're going to start, I guess, with the obvious story, are we? Nigel. Yes, it's, it's what happened. It's this dramatic summit and the political fallout. And the reason I took this paper from you was, <laughs> yes, it's Clegg rages at Cameron's spectacular failure. So the Lib Dems in a tight spot. But perhaps what people may not have noticed, and you won't blame me, I hope, for mentioning this, is that on page three, the latest opinion poll, for the first time, puts UKIP above the Lib Dems in a national opinion poll. So, so a big moment for you. It is a big moment for us, <coughs> without any, any shadow of a doubt. However, you know, do we come out of this summit, and don't forget the Prime Minister did what he did to protect the City of London, and the big question is, has the city been protected? Well, it's one question. government. <laughs> the big question is, what is coming next? And, and, and I, I particularly picked up on this article in the Sunday Telegraph by Bruno Waterfield, Europe's 26 plotting their revenge. The big problem we've got now is that we're still members of the EU, we're still subject to all of their laws, we are more unpopular, I suspect, than we've ever been as a member of the Union, we're in a permanent voting minority, and that very industry that Cameron sought to protect is now very seriously under threat. There is going to be retribution. And in this article, you've got quotes from people like Daniel Cohn-Bendit and various French officials. And they, every time now, the bond markets twitch in this long-running Euro saga, I can see the finger of blame being pointed at those awful Anglo-Saxons in mm. the city of London. And I fear we will see legislation on our foreign exchange business, on our bond dealing business, on our equity business, that, that I, and I, I suspect within the next few months we're going to be asking ourselves a bigger question. Not should we have gone along with this so-called mm. rescue plan, but should we even be members of this union at all? In a, in a way, the kind of response we'll share is going to be that, you know, they say this, they say that, and yeah. we don't know what's going to happen next. Yeah, and yes. everybody in Europe seems to be surprised. Yeah. Um, <laughs> we mentioned the, um, the problems ahead for the city. Yeah. Um, there's another story about Past problems in the city, Nigel, the RBS yeah. story. Well, it's the pantomime season and the villain is back. Fred Goodwin, everyone's favourite villain, who, despite the disaster at RBS, appears to be getting a pension of £340,000 a year. So, nice work if you can get it. Um, I do want to emphasise, when we talk about the city, we're not talking all about Fred Goodwin's. There are many insurance and banking and, 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 and FX services that we do rather well. But what's happening here is the blame game is now beginning for what happened to RBS. And this story of how this relatively small conservative Scottish bank in the space of a few years got itself into such a mess uh, that it was really in danger of bringing down much of the British economy with it. So what will happen tomorrow is the FSA will release their side of the story and they will blame the Bank of England and in time the Bank of England will blame the FSA and I suggest that Gordon Brown goes on a very long holiday because what he did as Chancellor in 97 is he set up this new tripartite agreement for the control of Britain's banking industry. And the upshot, I think, is that nobody actually knew who was in charge and nobody took any responsibility. I'm always fascinated, where did the money go? I mean, £40 billion of public money apparently went into rescuing a bank for paying £40 billion for a Dutch bank. Did the Dutch get £40 billion? And these huge sums swill around in Europe. The idea that you're going to be able to stop it by Euro regulation is absurd. But this is a global market and vast amounts of money. I'm assuming. I mean, that's true. The Simon. Dutch have been laughing all over their face. That's know. true, Simon. But I would argue that pre-97, when the Bank of England had control over this, they understood it, yeah. and I think the alarm bells would have rung yeah. far earlier. Yeah. Well, let's turn to a much more sort of fudgy, complicated story, which is the climate change um, conference in Durban, which has come to a sort of conclusion, but not a very dramatic one. And a lot of decisions are going to be put off, but that's better than no decision at all. Um, but it's been interesting, I mean, climate change is one of those stories that's sort of, despite David Attenborough, is, is sort of slithering off the agenda now. Mm. And, and uh, it was an amusing story this week when this turbine caught mm. fire. 
I mean, it caught fire. The wind was too strong. <laughs> yeah. well, we all know that when the wind is too strong, you can't work a turbine, and you then have to pay the owner of the turbine a vast amount of money for not having bought the electricity from him. The yeah. lunacy of this industry it makes common yeah. agricultural policy seem sane. You're not an enthusiast <laughs> for wind turbines, I, I well, deduce. They're, 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 they're just a very, very expensive mm -hmm. way of giving some rich people lots more money. And the incredible thing is, we've got, only got 3,000 of them so far, and think of the upset um, that it's caused. Hoon's plan, Chris Hoon's plan, is to build 32,000 more of them over the course yes. of the next 20 years. Now, but, I'm sure that's not actually practically possible, but what are we doing the, the, west, the west side of the British Isles, just people should note, the western half of the British Isles will be coated in these machines mm. if, that's, if this sort of plan goes ahead. And yeah. it'll be entirely at public expense. Yeah. And for yeah. no CO2 but emission reduction anyway. Okay. Great, great British heroes. Uh, the Speaker of the House of Commons, Nigel Farage. You've got a, you've got a well, yeah, it wasn't Speaker so much, Burko story. It wasn't story. so much the Speaker I was <laughs> going to focus on, but his wife Sally. And, and, and I have to confess, I do actually like Sally very much, but it, it, here she is um, launching a tirade on Twitter against Kirsty, Kirsty Allsop calling her middle class. Well, come on, Sally, you went to Marlborough. I think it's time you pipe down a little bit on some of these things. Right. And finally, uh, to the real economy, you, Jenny well, Agatha. Yeah, front page again, but, but uh, stuffed in there is, is uh, Blumenthal's, an article on Blumenthal and, and how his Christmas puddings are on the black market. That's um, right. People are going into shops, buying up scores and hundreds of Christmas puddings. And we're making excuses them. like that for weddings and we're things like that and, and reselling them for large amounts of money. But this is reflecting the austerity and the crime that uh, we're suffering at the moment. Right. And it's, also, the it's also the pure market coming out. I mean, you, you cannot stop touting. Yeah. You cannot stop it. Well, there's an eBay market. You, you may well have it. damaged the viewership of the last 10 minutes of this program because they'll all be rushing off. To rushing off to yeah. buy <laughs> the puddings, but what's, yes, so they can find them on eBay. Christmas puddings, Morris dancing, wind farms. They don't appear in your history book, do they, Simon? Oh, Maybe thank you. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. <laughs> they will in time. They, they will, will in time. time. Yes. All right. Thank You'll you. find that Thank place. you all very much indeed. That was great Thank fun. You.